wants it to be about. Uh, I am joined as always by my friends, Chris and Allison. You can find them on the internet. It's linked somewhere. If you're at this podcast, you know how to find us. Um, Balderdash, but podcast form. That's the clip notes. Let's just get to it. <laughs> that was uh, that was that was quick. That was efficient. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it roll these days. Efficiency. <laughs> Uh, I was going to talk about this at the end, but uh, maybe I don't want to. I've had this email sitting in my inbox for a long time uh, because it is a um, comment that I haven't approved yet on episode 11010111, uh, Embouchure. Um, oh yeah who could forget and the comment much like all of our comments uh (laughs) and all of our feedback is uh irrelevant and probably spam but i wanted to just you know call it out because it is a comment and so those people even though they are giving us spam and we're going to delete it uh still deserve to be heard so uh i suppose since i have a plan for the end of the show we could sort of front load uh, the show with this comment uh, uh, from Sarah Michalak, I guess, Michalak, Michalak, uh, and it's at timestamp 024. <laughs> wow. So <laughs> way back in. It's, it's a timestamp. It's timestamped. So 24 seconds into the episode, uh, Sarah writes the highly relevant uh comment uh the recent situation that's happening in the world has changed our life style and we really need to learn how Wait, to earn was that two words like yes. is that why you broke it like that yes. i really appreciate that that was so effective <laughs> we really need to learn how to do how to do earn money online what if you want to set up if what I if you want money online i would be set what if you want to set up your own business but you don't know how don't is actually I'll, I'll since we're doing it's actually don't because there's no apostrophe so what if you don't know how uh i recommend you this guy he will set up you auto profit site with done for you six thousand monthly income it is a ready-made website with content connected offers digital products google advertisement Amazon Amazon advertisement and one month connected traffic of visitors. Managing it wisely, you earn 6k monthly and your expenses will be $1950 for the installation and 600 to 700 dollars for traffic which you need to send monthly. Speaking about traffic, you will not need to worry about this as we usually send this amount and we continue maintaining it. It is not the system that you just press the button and here is the money as you will need to manage it. But if you follow our instructions, the income is guaranteed. And then there's a WhatsApp uh, number. That's unfortunate because yeah. I'm looking for the system that you push the button and just get the money. <laughs> yeah, I, We're I almost agree. there. <laughs> yeah. um, now I is feel, now I feel okay about the leading. Of, is this the new version of like the Nigerian prince scam? What are you talking about? Different. I sent all my money to the Nigerian prince. This feels different than Nigerian prince. Does it? Yeah. Like, here's it a bunch of money. It doesn't feel helpful. Well, I mean, I guess you are sending off money, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Send us money, and, and you we'll will get send more money you a in program. return. Like, it's just a yeah. yeah, yeah. But Nigerian prince is like also pinging into your like. But I feel like there's actually a, a like a traffic harvesting. Like, I, th- I feel like there's actually a thing here. I don't think it's just oh. like enough money. Like I don't think it's just 
like Nigerian prints is all about you just send off money to these people and and you just nothing that's just you're just giving them money because with with the promise of getting a, a million or two million or however yeah. much this feels like there's actually some sort of like spamming spam bot like botnet sort of component where like you actually are maintaining a website that they're feeding traffic into and that it is generating revenue of which maybe you'll get a portion but you're doing that you actually i do have a thing we but are only all if, i noticed only if you follow protocol which i bet is right. very difficult to do <laughs> Well, if you yeah, don't, we all do have a soft spot in our cold little hearts for bots. So. I mean, that's that's the thing is, if you don't follow protocol, they still get their money. You don't get any money, and they're not out anything because they told you this is what you're supposed to do. You don't just press the button and it works. Anyway, that was stupid. But I I I now feel happy about deleting that email because I didn't want to delete it without like bringing it to the show, and it's been sitting there for like a month. So, um, so late. what happened? Like seriously, like how would that like read the opening line again? Oh god. Just the opening sentence. Let's see. Let me go back. Uh to my trash. These okay. with all that is going on in the world. For sure. Yeah, that it was something like that. Like I feel like that could have come in like they've been using that message for a yeah. while. The recent saying. situation happening in the world has changed our life style. And yeah, we really fine. need to how we really need to learn how to do money do earn money yeah. how to do yeah. earn money online yeah yeah i feel like that that's first 2020 sentence... right there that's just the whole the next, year the whole the year. next conversation i have with a potential client i'm just like well i like to do earn money <laughs> <laughs> um could you the do pay situation me? in the world has, has affected my life style style <laughs> yeah i need to do earn money yeah oh what now um, out of the way so I know last week was the uh, first episode of the year. Mm -hmm. I don't, I thought that was a great episode, but I don't feel like 2021 really backed us up so far. Can we maybe like just say that season three starts sometime in February, kind of put the brakes on this season three thing, just call this like extra innings for season two, just in case. Just in case. <laughs> I we mean, just keep starting the season over. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we could from a technical standpoint. It hasn't actually gone out yet as of when we're recording this, but um, I don't know if there's any like functional difference between like in just moving it to, to next month. That's true. It's, it's, it's an arbitrary, it's an arbitrary delineator anyway. We could just have one season. I know, of but God, it just hurts to start also, this year. Also, you don't year. listen to we're, the podcast. Yeah, so. but we're, what, what is it today? Matter. That's a valid point. We're 14 just days tell, in and it just feels like that. It just keeps coming, doesn't it? Like, well, it damn. It, 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 when is Lunar New Year? Things wasn't, things were going to change on January 1st. I know. And I said that, I said that, I know. I, I'm very aware of that and I agree, but. And things aren't even going to change on January 20th. I know. But, I know. you know, at least there'll be one less dumpster fire. Uh, in the world Ugh. our bar is so low yeah 2021 one less one dumpster less. fire <laughs> i mean honestly that is my bar that is my bar for 2021 like we've got dumpster fire like many dumpster fires 2021 is about getting rid of one of them the most the, the maybe not even the biggest one but one of the dumpster fires get rid of that thing i'm happy that the year has been done successfully. Do we need to set up historically if someone's listening to this episode in like it's part of an archive as to the status of the world or do we just not care? Nah, no, it's, it's early 2021. Just it's it's it. time stamped. I mean, it is, there is a date yeah. associated in the meta for, for all the episodes. That works for me. Yeah. They'll know fine. because they're trapped in a weird metal structure listening to a weird FM radio that's replaying old archival podcast <laughs> you guys oh this is so, the worst station guys can't you listen to something else <laughs> i just started watching watchmen uh, oh. and is it uh, good oh my god it is probably not the best thing to watch right now yeah. but aaron is out of town so i'm like binging it um and i'm hoping that i get to the end quickly because i really like i i last night i had like so much anxiety going to bed <laughs> <laughs> because of this show um 
it is so i really love the graphic the the comic book series the watchmen like i it was one of the things actually i think um i i i had a in in college i took a class that was on non-linear uh or new narrative forms new narrative forms is the name of the class um and one of the things we talked about were comic books particularly in graphic novel format um and the watchman was one of the things that we talked about uh and it i mean that and like v is for vendetta and from hell and like just alan moore just in general like opened my eyes to like so much depth that can be communicated through that that medium uh that i hadn't i mean i i read comic books and i was really into comic books but i never like those change they change the dynamic of the form um and Watchmen is really clever in how it does that because it is at its heart a superhero story but it's also making comments about superhero stories while also talking about the cold war and also being this like lovecraftian cosmic horror thing uh that culminates at the end and um so i love that book and um, i know nothing about it but that pitch has got my attention it's it's fucking amazing um just the writing like alan moore as a writer is is fantastic and when you put it in when he writes for comic books it's just so it uses the panels and and the way that the medium can communicate story in in such it, it's like in such a natural way that like you couldn't really imagine this story happening in any other format almost um it's it's just it's really well done um so uh i didn't have expectations for the show I, I didn't think the show would live up to my expectations because of because of the comic and because i watched the movie the watchmen that they made many years ago and that was awful do not watch the movie the watchmen it is horrible um but that was sort of what I was expecting. That was, and I wanted to watch it. I was interested in it because of my affinity for the book and because I like the story. And even, I, even though the movie was awful, I still watched it. All that. Um, How many episodes are there? I think like 10 or something. It's not a ton. Um, I haven't, I've only seen clips. I haven't, I, but it's, <laughs> I've it's, been in the mindset to sit down. <laughs> it's really, really good. And what I didn't get from like any of the trailers, any of the information about it, or whatever before, was that it's not even really about, so the, the, the point of the book, the comic book is that is the, the idea of who watches the Watchmen. It's the superheroes group that becomes so powerful that they kind of started working outside the law and like making decisions that affect millions of people um and millions of people's lives and like because like they're social super, media because they are super powerful and so because they're super powerful nobody can really do anything to stop them and whether or not they are benevolent is really just like a flip of a coin like just because they have these powers and they can do good things doesn't mean that they will do good things and that was sort of the idea of like if you put superheroes in a real world scenario what would those people actually be like the show is has a little bit of that but it's also about like the aftermath of the things that happen in the book but it goes more much more deeply into white supremacy mm -hmm. um so like the whole first half of the the series that i've been watching is all about white supremacy it talks about the tulsa race riots the, the tulsa race massacre um that's that's where it starts is the tulsa race massacre um and uh and then it goes on from there and like it's got an amazing like diverse cast and all the acting is fantastic um it's it's got a lot more depth and there's there's every once in a while there's like throwbacks to the comic book but it doesn't feel like you need to like have a really it doesn't feel like you need to have that as like a prerequisite to enjoying the the show it's it's like it'll it'll sort of feed you hints and if you know what the backstory you can pick up on on what it's referencing but if you don't i think it's like okay like it's it's still just a, an element of the story um that something that happened in the past um because it takes place like in 2019 so it takes place like 30 years after the stuff that's in the book happened anyway so all of it is sort of distant history anyway um mm -hmm. it is really fucking good um and i'm really impressed and uh it might give me nightmares 
Oh yeah, I'm out then. <laughs> I'm, I'm at my allotment of nightmares right now. I need a few months before I start adding. I mean, that was the reason why I hadn't watched. But I, I've been really, really impressed. It's really, really good. Um, and it, it, and 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 the fact that it gets deep, so deep into um, like like the white supremacy stuff and like uh is is really interesting um because there's essentially a group that's sort of like a quasi modern kkk group that is sort of like out in the public sort of and it also talks about like um and there's just so many how things can that, you watch this right know, now how are so you how are you able to do this there's like so many things that just tie directly i can like feel like that happened in the last couple weeks my blood pressure like rising just in this conversation right now yeah like my yeah. muscles tensing up and do you have a rave review to like counteract that's like opposite? <laughs> yeah, how about Ted Lasso? By the way, on my screen, opposite. That's that's gonna be the next thing. That's that's gonna be my chaser. I think is when I finish with this, I might I might binge uh, Ted Lasso. Yes, I'm, I I'm I highly recommend it. Screen, so it's like I have like two sides <laughs> that are telling me to watch things. <laughs> Ted Lasso is an Apple TV Plus series. They offer, I think, a seven day trial or whatever. I don't know. Um, we, we, I don't know. I bumped into Apple TV plus and someone had mentioned the show and I'm like, yeah, I'll watch it. Cause it was someone that I had a similar sense of humor and it's not like a deeply, deeply funny show. It's just a show that's, it's good. It's wholesome. There's some scenes where you're like, oh, that sucks. But honestly, like the main character is a person that I like and I very much enjoyed it. There's some great, like American British humor jabs at each other. It's this is this is the show that I need right now. Mm. There's not deep thought involved, just real basic human interaction stuff. It's it's wholesome. I will Very say, I will say. So we we watched the rookie. I can um, call it wholesome, actually. Now maybe not. And, I wonder if there's anything in there that people might be like, "This is what he considers wholesome." Maybe I mean, it's not. I don't. If they're listening to us, then wholesome is probably different. Not on the radar. Yeah um so we watched we watched the rookie and uh i was before the season of the rookie and the rookie has a it's nathan philly and cop show set in la um i thought you said the wookie for a minute not the wookie <laughs> the like, rookie how did i miss this got um, really excited <laughs> i mean mostly mostly we watch it for nathan fillion i mean it's it's a good police procedural kind of Fair reason kind of comedic drama um like drama with comedy elements because nathan fillion is funny basically um and i before the season started i read a review of the season that interviewed the the showrunners that was talking about how they really wanted to address uh again like race issues in the show in a way that was different than how they had done it before because they also have a fairly diverse cast but again it's still like you know like after the blm this is what i can watch maybe after the BLM stuff over the summer, um, they wanted to talk about the the all cops are bastards sort of thing, and like, like, it's it's still at the end of the day a, a cop show, which means that the cops are the heroes, and they wanted to show nuance. So they're pushing that this season, and like after two episodes in, I mean, it's not subtle. <laughs> it's like it's pretty strongly in your face this is our agenda that we're that we're doing in a way that is um uh i mean like it's it's very obvious that like it's kind of smacking you in the face with 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 the message which is um occasionally irritating which is in a, in very much the way that watchman is not doing those things that's why why my head went to that is like what what network is it streamed on um, it is, I will go to my, I guess I could just Google it myself as I'm reading about it. I just hope that you uh, have a quick answer. The rookie is Amazon on, prime. It's on ABC. ABC. Oh, but it's not, wait, is it streaming? I don't know that it's prime. actually streaming. It's not how I get No, it. it's not. It's not, uh, which means it is on uh, it. Plex, it turns out. That's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm 15 years too late, but I'm watching the US version of The Office. Um, what do you think? I love it. It's nice. It's great. 
it's like low key. I like the characters. <laughs> it's like chill vibes. <laughs> Even at the most heightened of drama, I'm like, I've worked <laughs> in an office. This is fine. <laughs> It's, it's chill. It's, it's I, like more you, chill than the other things that were described. Okay. Like, okay. Have you have you looked around? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I in, mean, in general, yeah. I don't have chill vibes, which is no. why I just watch people work in an office. <laughs> I mean, the reason why the reason why I'm watching Watchmen now while Erin is out of town is because she is because well, a she didn't want to watch it because she generally has uh, she generally doesn't like superhero movies or shows. Although I did get her to watch Jessica Jones um, and Luke Cage, as it turned out. Um, but uh, also because a lot of the stuff that we watch together is stuff that is far more escapist. So the stuff that we've been watching together is like the like Korean like soap operas. Um, that that's like like we have a whole string of Korean of Korean soap operas uh that that we've been watching uh what that is far more escapist and very like that is wholesome because that is like kissing is taboo like getting like within you know five feet of each other is 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 like cause for like uncomfortable like tension and, and like sexual tension uh, and, like, yeah yeah <laughs> like and and it's 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 they are phenomenally cute um they're like things that you could watch oh. with your kids probably um <laughs> Except they're like really weird, like relationship interpersonal things in there, which is always it's always like the same weird interpersonal things. Um, but yeah, d so so like I definitely have that side. <laughs> um, so that's what I would consider like the wholesome thing, and the oh, reason why like there's, there's there there is a type of humor that basically involves like shitting on each other um, <laughs> that 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 Aaron hates and like doesn't like it makes her uncomfortable to watch so we don't watch stuff like that and that was my always my impression of the office was that it was a lot of like people being really horrible to each other just generally oh that's interesting i think i mean the I boss watched it, but that was my outside in, in well, like i think i think the british version is a lot more like stilted and harsh um and when we made the switch to the us version it was just like First of all, the casting really helps because you're just like, Steve Carell is like, you know, you know, like, you know that the casting helps that situation because you know that's not the guy he is, hopefully, I guess. Um, so the boss is like so tone deaf and makes all sorts of like racial, just so many, he, but he's like genuinely like loving being the boss, which is just like, just the weird part of it and then some of the some of the interpersonal stuff i guess there's one rivalry between um two two of the employees where they're constantly just like i don't know playing pranks on each other and it's just but they're like kind of both delusional in their own way so it's kind of makes sense to me somehow my other recommendation if i haven't already made it is midnight gospel which will either have you think less of me or more of me i'm not sure <laughs> Um, it's animated, but it's taken uh, audio from Duncan Trussell's Happy Family, Duncan Trussell's Family Hour. I don't know. It's a podcast um, where he interviews a bunch of people. But basically, the audio goes along with the cartoon, the animation, and all sorts of surreal stuff happens. It's basically the, the so it's like it's like uh, space space ghost coast to coast. Kind of, kind of. And like the, yeah, it's basically like this guy's an intergalactic, uh, he's a podcaster and he goes to different planets and tries to get interviews, but on each planet, he has a different avatar that's picked out for him. Um, but his voice remains the same and like just weird stuff happens. And I don't know, it's really, it's thoughtful. It's funny. It's yeah, it's good. Anyway, I think there's only like eight or 10 episodes, but. I will, I will highly recommend the, the current, uh, um, K drama that we're watching, which is um, Mystic Pop Up Bar. Hmm. Uh, so Mystic Pop Up Bar, uh, essentially there is this woman who was in love with a prince, who uh, I like that Gary's taking notes. <laughs> there's a woman who is in love with. A I have like nine tabs was, of TV shows. Who is like Wikipedia able to, pages? What a nerd! <laughs> woman who is who is in love with a prince, uh, who is able to sort of empathetically, uh, like. 
I don't know if she was able to, to like empathetically solve people's problems through their dreams, I guess, or maybe just was able to solve their problems um, or like understand what their problems were and like give them a solution when she was alive. Oh, I think someone else was telling me about and this. Then, and then her mother was killed by like some raiding party and the whole town was burned and she was sort of rejected by her prince who she was in love with because his father had things and so she went and out of rage committed suicide in the tree that was like the sacred tree and so she was cursed to to solve 100,000 people's problems in the afterlife like as as a as a like before she could like return to the world and like be, be resurrected or be reincarnated or whatever it's like she was, she was cursed to solve 100,000 people's problems so she's at so the show starts when she's at 999,995 people have have been solved she's all, almost done and so the way that she does it she has this like magical like liquor that she puts in she she Figure, gets people to, to confess their problems. She gives them a magic liquor, which then allows her to jump into their dreams and then like resolves the issue through their dreams. And then when they wake up, it's like done or like they have a better outlook on life or something. Um, They've like resolved it internally. Yeah. So, but it's really interesting because it's like, it's funny, but it's also like really surreal and like fantastical. And there's this character who like when he touches people, they immediately want to tell him their problem, which obviously is like the perfect tie in to like what she does. And so she recruits him um, and they go and they like they talk to like it gets into a little bit of like Korean mythology um, and like death is a character that's just like this happy go lucky dude. And um, yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty entertaining. Um. One side note, see. mine's animated, but it's probably not for children. There's like cursing and just weird adult content. <laughs> just want to uh, Dickinson is the other um, Apple TV Plus series that's worth watching, and Death is fantastic in that series too. I would uh, recommend on Apple TV Plus C as well with uh, Jason Momoa. What was C? S E E. It's the one. It's there. Ever. It's in a post-apocalyptic future where everybody is blind, um, and and so that whole thing is really interesting. How like culture is evolved without sight, um, and uh, and then like there's a baby or the babies that are born that have sight, and and so it's sort of about like like the, the like religious sort of implications and like what that, that what that means for the world and what that means for them is as like all sorts of things it's really good worth noting that none of this uh none of these are space shows <laughs> it's true yeah so well actually wait mine kind of is <laughs> oh yeah that's true yours kind of is uh watchmen maybe is because uh not dr man not in the classic like tom hanks in a spaceship yeah okay. yeah no yeah mm -hmm. watchmen kind of is because dr manhattan is on mars and uh and so what? there's a, there's a little bit of space. Doctor Manhattan is one of the one of the superheroes. Um, basically, he walked into some weird experiment and it like blew up all of his particles in his body, and he came out as sort of like this ascended being that can basically do anything he wants. And he was already basically a genius before. So like this sort of like he he's a genius <laughs> at, with godlike powers. Wait, though, I feel like that's the funniest origin story, though, because yeah. it's basically like you went into a meeting or something when it, you weren't supposed to, and you're like super smart, but yet you're like, oh, are you guys, oh, no, it's an explosion. Like, just, I, just like, <laughs> I mean, superhero origin stories are by default dumb. I mean, I think the whole point of that particular origin story is because it is so dumb. Like, oh, I went into a room at the wrong time. <laughs> wow, we didn't I, even get to a topic, and now we're on to the, the, the special after show party. I'll save my topic for another time. Yeah. This cool. has been uh, Binary Jazz uh, Television Show Reviews. Join us again uh, next yeah. week. <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, I need you both to pick a number between yeah. one and four. Three. Two. Okay. We're going to split the difference and call it two. All right. This, uh, <laughs> this game is called... Hold on, let me get my calculator. <laughs> I didn't realize you needed us both to pick the same number. I didn't, yeah, I didn't know either. I, did I totally matter. could have passed that it test if you had said that before. I would have said three. I, that not, is I, not the game. <laughs> hey, I thought we needed to pick this, two numbers. This game, this game is called Marvel Superhero, Marvel Character, or 
Jean-Claude Van Damme movie. Ooh. And okay. so uh I have if like anybody, no chance in if this anybody's one. listening, uh these did come from Critical Role. So if you know Critical Role, then you will know all the answers. But these people that are on the show with me now do not because they don't watch it. And I'm like 200 episodes in, so you'd have to get really freaking deep to get this stuff. And I checked like crit roll stats and like crit roll uh transcripts to get like specifically the, the answers because I knew that there was things that he did. Um yeah, they're from they're from some, some of the ad stuff. Anyway, like most of them. Uh, so, a Marvel character or Jean Claude Van Damme movie, The Sinister yeah. Six. Uh, Marvel. Marvel. You are correct. Hit Wait, Man. are you keeping score? <laughs> Wait, what was what was the new one? I probably I probably should. Let's see. Uh, who do Gary? Um, Hitman. And uh, Van Damme. Allison. Okay. Yeah, Hitman. Jean Claude Van Damme. Yeah, Van Damme. You're both wrong. It's a Marvel character. Yeah. Yes. Brawler. Sounds about right. What? Brawler. Marvel. I'm going to go JCVD. <laughs> oh, damn. It On is. An uh, Brawler, is a, Brawl, Brawler is a Marvel character. Damn. Uh, Time Cop. I want that to be. Jean Claude Van Damme. Yeah, you're both correct. That, that is like the <laughs> that is the only uh, Jean Claude Van Damme movie I know by title. I think Century. Jean Claude Van Damme. I'm gonna double down. <laughs> yeah, I'm with that. Jean Claude Van Damme. Both incorrect as a Marvel character. JCVD. <laughs> Jean Claude Van Damme is a Marvel character. <laughs> it's no, it's a Jean Claude Van Damme. Okay, I thought this was a trap. <laughs> Uh, there is a trap, but it comes later. Uh, kickboxer. Thanks for the heads up. Uh, Van Damme. Van Damme. Oh, God. Is it? No, you're both right. Oh, God. Blood sport. <laughs> Van Damme. Uh, yeah, Van Damme. Okay. I think uh, I've heard of that, even. Cyborg. Van Damme. Uh, Marvel. It is Van Damme. <sighs> really? Def Defender. Marvel. Marvel. Incorrect. Uh, the Expendables. Marvel. I've heard of them. Oh, oh wait. Yeah. yeah, Marvel. It's Van Damme. I think The Expendables is DC. Oh, is that was that the trap? <laughs> no, no, that's not that's not the trap. <laughs> that's not even the trap. I, 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 actually, I actually pulled out the trap. The trap was a uh, was a Dolph Lundgren movie, but I I pulled that out. Um, the last one, Double Impact. Uh, Van Damme. It's gotta be Van Damme. You're both correct, it is Van Damme. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You both got eight out of however many that was. So you both tied, there's no winner. Okay, uh, pick a number between one and three. We've got more time. Are we supposed to both pick the same number again? No. One. What kind of game one. would it be if you both picked the same? Okay, fine, one. Uh, <laughs> all right. This one is called. This one got called... so thrown by split the difference, and then the difference. <laughs> between two two. I had like I had survivor's guilt, Chris. In, I, like it was <laughs> in D and D when you make a roll and it's like an it's like a one d two or something, and you roll a three, you roll you. It's like you. you I mean, if it's in between things, you you you. Uh, um, round more? down. Okay. Round down. All right. So this one is called Magic the Gathering card or not Kama in or... fact splitting the difference. Wait, or what? <laughs> Magic the Gathering card or Kama Sutra position. Oh god. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> Ready? Okay. Black Lotus. Wait, hold on. I need, to, I, need to, I need to I need to get the uh <laughs> you need to get the answers though. <laughs> also answer. Chris's Google searches lately have been <laughs> <laughs> All right, Black Lotus. Magic. Um, Kama Sutra. It is a Magic the Gathering card. She Wolf. Magic, magic. Gathering. What'd you say, Gary? Magic. Magic. You're magic. both incorrect. It is Kama Sutra. Lone Wolf. Well, obviously Kama Sutra. <laughs> <laughs> I'm magic. That is correct. It is a Magic the Gathering card. 
I feel like Lone Wolf is the saddest. Yeah, the Lone Wolf would be the saddest. As soon as I said it, I'm like, oh. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Illicit auction. Magic. I'm gonna go Kama Sutra. I'm gonna <laughs> just gonna go that route for most of them, I think. That one is a Magic the Gathering card. Uh, the Curled Angel. Kama Sutra. Yeah, Kama Sutra. That is Kama Sutra. The Mud Hole. <laughs> the what? The Mud Hole. Oh, I hope it's magic. I hope it's magic too. <laughs> Excavation. Wait. Magic. What was the last one? Was the last one magic? Mud Hole is magic, yeah. <laughs> okay. I didn't hear the answer and I'm yeah, like. No, sorry. <laughs> you were both right. The uh, yeah. Excavation. Magic. Kama Sutra. You're both right. It's both. <laughs> Forgive me for not being so excited. So I'll give I'll give you I'll give you both half points for that because you're half right. And that and that uh, Gary wins with four that time. Allison, you got three correct. How did I get one half point and it it comes up to four? Oh, okay, four Your and math a half is really four and a half, <laughs> four and a half versus three and a half. You know you know what I mean. All right, uh, we've got two minutes left. We could probably do another one. Um, do, do, do. Uh, we'll save that one. Okay, this one is a bunch of weird things. Uh, maybe we'll be able to get do it in two minutes. We'll I see. like the previous two. <laughs> well, this one, this one doesn't have a single theme. Um, so this one, each one uh, is either a D and D familiar or something else, and it's the, the something else is different for each each question. Uh, so the first one, uh, one of these things is actually a board game. The other three are D and D familiars. Which is the board game and not a familiar? Is it sure. A Boggle, B Dweeblex, C Pudding King, or D Unstable Unicorns? Boggle. Well, boggle. <laughs> Unstable Unicorns is a board game and not a familiar. Okay. Okay. Three I think of I've these. Played Boggle though. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Three of these are D and D familiars. One yeah. of them is a real West Hollywood bar. Oh. You need to pick the West Hollywood bar. Okay. Is it the Naughty Pig, the Man Trap, the Steel Predator, or the Cockatrice? The Man Trap. Yeah. I feel like that's the right answer. <laughs> the naughty pig is, according to my sources, the correct answer. <laughs> but does that eliminate there being a bar called the Man Trap? I'm pretty sure there's, there's, be there's probably a bar called the Man Trap, but it might not be in West Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> All right. One of these in this is an Australian ca uh, candy. The other three are D and D familiars. Which is the Australian candy? Is it a Nalfashni? A musk stick, ochre jelly, or veggie pygmy? Ochre jelly. Veggie pygmy. Veggie pygmy, pygmy is correct. That is the Australian candy. Oh, that sounds disgusting. <laughs> and oh, ochre thinking... jelly sounded great. <laughs> I was thinking of Vegemite, so I was like, they're on this. this yeah, is a yeah, thing. yeah. Okay, uh, sort of uh, throwback to our earlier theme. One of these is a Kama Sutra position. The other three are D&D &D beasts. Which is the Kama mm. Sutra position? Is it the flying snake, the curled flower, the stench cow, or the corpse flower? The curled flower. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at, at @binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the form on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz. Thank you.